Hi, my name is Claire Anderson, and today I'll be presenting on this study investigating the efficacy of various hand washing methods against enveloped and non enveloped viruses. As some background, promoting hand washing with soap and water has been proven to reduce instances of both respiratory and enteric disease. However, a lot of areas around the world do not have access to soap and water for hand washing purposes. So this is a map of the proportion of population lacking access to a hand washing station with soap and water in 2019. And the areas in blue have high access and the areas in red and orange have lower access, typically due to resource limitation. So when a community has limited resources and limited access to soap and water for hand washing purposes, they may turn to alternative hand washing techniques. And some examples of alternatives include using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, washing with water only, or washing with a microfiber towel. And specifically in this presentation, I'll be referencing something called the super towel, which is a towel with an antimicrobial treatment designed to eliminate pathogens and serve as a substitute to hand washing in these resource limited communities. And so when we're looking at all of these different hand washing alternatives, we should consider these three different criteria on how effective the hand washing alternative is. So the first criteria is that the hand washing method is effective at removing pathogens. And that applies to a wide variety of pathogens, including bacteria and viruses, and specifically enveloped and non-enveloped viruses. Additionally, the hand washing alternative should be consistently accessible, meaning that it should be low in cost and available in local markets. And then lastly, the hand washing alternative should be correctly used by the community, meaning that the community has knowledge on how and when to use the alternative hand washing method. And in this study, the alternative hand washing methods that we're looking at have the possibility to fulfill all three of these criteria. However, they're pretty understudied. So we're just looking at this first criteria of whether or not the hand washing method is effective at removing pathogens. And so to summarize, the aim of the study is to evaluate the efficacy of hand washing alternatives against viruses for use when recommended methods of hand washing are not available. And to achieve that aim, our goal within the methods is to quantify the reduction in concentration of viruses that we place onto volunteers' hands from each hand washing method. And as I alluded to before, we're using two different types of viruses, both enveloped and non-enveloped virus viruses. And they're similar in that they both contain genetic material surrounded by a protein capsid, and they can have spikes. Um, however, Enveloped viruses have an extra layer or envelope surrounding them that non-enveloped viruses do not have. And some examples of enveloped viruses include 5-6, influenza, SARS-CoV-2, and Ebola, where examples of non-enveloped viruses include MS2, norovirus, and enteroviruses. And I bolded 5-6 and MS2 because those are the viruses that we used in this experiment. They're non-pathogenic surrogates to human pathogenic viruses, and they're what we actually placed on the volunteers' hands. So that's what we started with, applying the viruses to the volunteers' hands, and then they performed one of 13 different hand washing methods. To go through them, we started with soap and water for 20 seconds, which served as the kind of baseline as the recommended or gold standard method of hand washing that we have currently. And then we did several different alternative methods, including using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, using a regular microfiber towel. And then we did three different soap and water variations. So looking at water only, looking at using soap and water for a short duration, and then using soapy water. And then we also looked at six variations of the super towel. And we followed all of those with a no wash control, which is where we applied the viruses to the volunteers' hands and then did no hand washing method and proceeded to the next step, which was recovery of viruses. 
And after we recovered viruses from the volunteers' hands, they did a decontamination step. And we used the sample of recovered viruses to quantify the remaining viruses on the hands. And we quantified the viruses in two different ways using plaque assays and RT-QPCR. And in this presentation, I'll focus on our plaque assay results. And so after the volunteer completed each of those steps, we did that 13 different times for each of the different hand washing methods. And then we repeated all of that 26 times for 26 volunteers total. And here's a graph of our results. So we have the results from each volunteer for each hand washing method overlaid by a box plot. And along the x-axis are all of the different hand washing alternatives and methods that we use, as well as on the y-axis, we have the log reduction in the concentration of virus. And a higher log reduction is generally better. It means that the hand washing method was more effective at removing the viruses. And we broke down the plot by virus type. So again, we have MS2, which is the non-enveloped virus at the top, and then Phi6, which is the enveloped virus at the bottom. And in this presentation, I'll be comparing everything back to soap and water for 20 seconds, which is again, the recommended method of hand washing in most cases. So starting at this right-hand side of the graph, looking at this block is all of the towels, including the regular, regular towel and the super towel. And the pink or purple shaded areas is our alternatives that were less effective than using soap and water for 20 seconds. And the green shaded areas are where we found the alternative was as effective as using soap and water for 20 seconds. And from our data, we came to this conclusion that washing with a towel was not consistently effective at removing either type of virus. If we move on to the next two alternatives, soapy water for 20 seconds and water only for 20 seconds, we found that these two alternatives were effective, as effective as soap and water for 20 seconds for both viruses. And that was our second conclusion that washing with soapy water and water only were both effective at removing both types of viruses. And then lastly, when we look at these last two alternatives, using a hand sanitizer and soap and water for five seconds, we found that they were effective for Phi6, the enveloped virus, but were not effective for MS2, the non-enveloped virus. So that was our third conclusion that washing with soap and water for a short duration and using hand sanitizer were only effective for the enveloped virus that we studied. And so when we're looking at the results in summary, we found that soapy water for 20 seconds and water only for 20 seconds were effective at removing both types of virus, whereas soap and water for five seconds and hand sanitizer were only effective for the envelope virus that we studied. And when interpreting these results, it leads us to consider um, pathogen type when promoting hand washing alternatives. So it's important to consider what pathogen we're targeting, whether that be bacteria, envelope viruses, or non envelope viruses, um, to choose the right hand washing alternative that would be effective against our pathogen target. Additionally, when interpreting these results, it's important to consider the effectivity in the field versus in the lab, because these are lab studies. Um, we controlled a lot of factors which may not be able to be controlled in the field and which may lead to a lower effectivity being found in the field versus in the lab. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the volunteers who helped me in the study, as well as the individuals listed here. Um, I have my email listed if anyone has any further questions. And lastly, I'd like to also thank the Humanitarian Innovation Fund for funding this project.